Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Today, we are speaking with a posing coach and trainer who has her bachelor's degree in neuroscience and plans to continue her education in clinical psychology. She was born and raised in Las Vegas and has been an athlete her entire life. After nine competitions as an amateur, she earned her pro card at the Amateur Olympia in 2019 and then went into the 2020 season strong with a third place win at her pro debut, earning her Olympia qualification points. Welcome to the show, Lexis Shea Redmond. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I am awesome. Like we both just mentioned, you know, it's an interesting time. So for those of you listening, we're recording this during the lockdown phase, you know, and I'm sure you'll hear this before since it's been extended to the end of April in the States. So um, yeah, other than that, we're going to get into lots of fun things. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And before we get into everything I have planned um, and want to cover with you, I always love to ask if there is something you do or a ritual you have or something you think about right before your heel hits the stage. Um, usually before I hit the stage, I am trying to either calm my nerves down by like dancing (laughs) or, (laughs) you know, just the pump up with my coach backstage. Mm -hmm. It's nice when your coach can be backstage with you, huh? Oh, it is a load (laughs) off my shoulder because it's so stressful. You're in a room with a bunch of mirrors. You're like, wait, is this going to show on stage? It, is there enough definition? Am I pumped? With your coach there, <laughs> they see everything. <laughs> it's good. Yes, they can calm us down and give us the truth that we need to hear. Yeah. And uh, I know you actually had a situation with you uh with like your coaching and I'm gonna definitely talk to you about that today but I want to kind of go through your journey as an athlete and um, I thought it was really cool to hear that in 2009 you actually saw your aunt step on stage and then you made a promise to yourself that you would do that too one day and then come 2018 you actually won the overall bikini champion title at the show you saw her compete at so what happened within you when you saw your aunt step on stage that inspired you to do the same thing and um, compete for the first time in 2016? Um, so I've always been like the shy, quiet kind of kid. Um, I was actually diagnosed as um, I had de- uh, depression. And so just seeing her up on that stage and like she was extremely happy and confident and I literally watched her through her whole prep and I was like Mm -hmm. I want to do that I'm going to be like her up there on stage and so I started working out with her and it was those moments that I was like the happiest that I've ever been wow so (laughs) it was more of my saving grace and I went to college and that's when I actually decided I'm going to do a show because like I saw a flyer in in one of the gyms that I joined and I had tried the whole antidepressants thing wasn't for me it was the gym that kind of like was my pickup wow and do you still feel that way today absolutely (laughs) which is why like it's super hard right now and not being able to go to the gym but yeah. the little home workouts and everything. Um, I've been going on morning walks, trying to keep my spirit up, and it's, it's still working. That's good to hear. I mean, it's definitely strange. I, I, I love being home. I love everything I do is at home anyways. Like, I work from home. I go to school online. But 
the fact of the matter now is that I can't go to the gym and with that none of us can and I realize now like how much I really look forward to um not just obviously training there but also seeing some people there and walking in and like talking to people at the front you know there's a lot of things I miss about it not just the actual lift and being in your own element in your own world so how are you recreating that at home? Like you said, you're going on walks, you're doing workouts from home. It, have you been able to recreate it exactly? Um, not with the full intensity that I normally would. I definitely don't have the people to kind of like vibe off of. Cause I, like you said, I love seeing mm-hmm. everybody like in the gym working on themselves. Um, I will occasionally like put my phone up and, open up Instagram and have people's stories playing while I'm working out just to kind of keep me there. I'm seeing everyone else is doing their home workouts or they're doing like live videos, trying to motivate people. Um, Just little things to kind of like get me as close to what I'm used to as I can. That's such a smart idea. I I love that you shared that because I would never have thought of that, but that makes total sense to want to have people's stories or live videos playing so it kind of gives you that same motivation that you get watching people in the gym or being in the same gym as other people who are chasing their goals as well yeah I mean yeah we're I'm a pro and everything but I still need other people to motivate me sometimes (laughs) it's freaking hard I love that you, you know, you're not afraid to admit that and you're not afraid to talk about like the challenges that you faced as well, not just with this, but also in the past. And um, how are you feeling right now about the Olympia and getting completely qualified um, with all these show changes? So originally I had uh, created like a tree map with my coach on how uh, 2020 would go. And based on wins, what shows we would be doing next. I've already had my next three shows postponed or canceled. Mm. Um, So we just recently updated it. And they haven't changed any of the pro shows yet um, that are on my list. It's mostly like the NPC that is getting postponed or canceled. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm a little nervous, to be honest, because <laughs> the NPC shows that they're postponing or canceling, their dates after my show. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's so, what's been going through, I know, a lot of people's heads, and I can understand why you'd feel like, oh, mine may be next. Yeah. So yeah, it, It's kind of crazy, because I'm like, what do we do like exactly (laughs) such a limbo phase yeah Um, what are your plans i I mean do you have a new strategy with that we're going to continue on as if my show is has no problem it's going to happen um until they actually post something isn't it crazy though because like Yeah. And you're, but you're like prepping. So you're conditioning down, you're dieting, you're doing, you know, the work that needs to be done. And then if they cancel it or postpone it and then you, okay, now I have to keep conditioning, keep diet for the next one. And then this continues and you want to be able to bring your best to the Olympia, you know, assuming that you'll gain all the points you need to qualify. And so it's such a strange time that we're all living in, but it's like, everything's so unpredictable. Well, um, since my show, my last show wasn't that far off, I mean, I'm still very conditioned. Um, My coach has implemented weekly refeeds. Um, He's literally keeping an eye on everything, and I'm grateful for him because I wouldn't (laughs) be able to. I'd be so stressed out and be like, all right, now I'm bloated, cores all through the roof. What what do I do now? (laughs) I love that. It's so cool how you are um, able to recognize like the support and the necessity of having other people's support and motivation as well. And I think like right now, that's such a great reminder to all of us. Like 
just go and ask your coach, like, what are their plans? What are their thoughts on how to move forward? And like, it's okay to borrow belief from them and borrow the support you need from them because that's what they're there for. Yeah. And it's a complete kind of like a different situation compared to like my last coach. (laughs) Yeah. I was actually just going to ask you about that. Like what happened? Can you walk us through this? Yeah, um, so after my first show ever, I got a coach um, who was a family friend. He used to train my mom and my aunt, and I used to babysit his kids. So, mm-hmm. like, we've known each other for a while. Um, he saw that I was dedicated, and he's like, hey, I would be willing to coach you. Um, it's been a while since I've done, like, a competitor, but, yeah, I'll do it. And I was like, great because I feel like that's what I was missing compared to my first show. Like, I didn't know anything about macros or proper dieting. I was just eating healthy foods and exercising. <laughs> so, um, I mean, we we were training together, and he was my coach for almost four years. We did seven shows together, um, three nationals, and the rest were just regional shows place really high at them and it wasn't until um, after USA's where things got a little rocky for us Um, it was USA's of 2019 I took fourth place in my class and immediately asked for feedback from Sandy wanting to know like what's next because you know national shows are like rolling literally almost two weeks apart towards the end after uh, USA's Mm -hmm. and the feedback was don't lean so far forward in your back post that was literally the one thing oh my gosh (laughs) and I like looking back at it I completely agree like it looks crazy when I look at a picture of USA's compared to um, amateur Olympia or even legends Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like since that's simple feedback the next nationals was North American why don't we do that Um, we weighed the pros and cons of all the upcoming nationals and he agreed North Americans would be the show to do and we're sitting at dinner talking about this because it was my my big you know congrats dinner Mm -hmm. um for placing top five and he's like my gift to you will be booking your flight and your hotel to North Americans he did it right there wow. at dinner okay and I'm yeah I'm like I'm ecstatic oh my god but you know what I'm gonna be pro soon yeah two days later um I'm getting ready to pay for the fee which was almost like three hundred dollars um and it was towards the deadline because the show was so close to USA's. And he sends me a text saying, cancel the reservations. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, what? So I call him. I'm like, what do you mean cancel the reservation? He's like, cancel your flight in the hotel reservation because it was under my name. So I'd, I'd have to do it. Oh, my gosh. And at this point, I'm like, I can't. I can't question him because it was his money. Yeah, of course. And I mean, I saw him more of as like a dad, so I wouldn't even question him, period. So I, I canceled him. And I'm just like, okay, what, what was the reason? Never got a reason. Seriously. And I feel like the only reason you would like pull me out of a show is if you felt like I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. And that hit me so hard because we talk about everything. And he's supposed to be like my one of my biggest supporters, if not the biggest. And it felt like he didn't believe in me. And you never we heard went, from him? We still trained at the same gym. Okay. At the same time, 4 o'clock in the morning. He didn't speak to me for a week. And I'm 
bawling my eyes out every morning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm like, I was so close to getting my pro card, cortisol through the roof. I'm starting to float like crazy. And it's past the deadline. So the registration fee had doubled. And I would have to pay for my flight to my hotel. And I was like, I can't financially do that. So I couldn't even pay for North American. So it was out of the, no longer an option. Mm -hmm. And since I lived in, Vegas, I was like, well, the next one is Amateur Olympia. Let me figure out where I'm sitting with my body and try to prep myself for that. Since my coach wasn't talking to me, I figured we were done. And <laughs> I did not hear from him until the day after I won my pro card. Did you prep yourself yeah. to get your pro card? I prepped myself to get my pro card. Oh my gosh. So he went, he goes MIA. You see him every day. He never says anything to you. You are not hearing from him. You decide, okay, the next closest thing to, you know, being rewarded a pro card is amateur Olympia. I'm going to just do that one despite not having a coach in my corner. Yeah. So then he reaches out to you the next day and what what did he say <laughs> that was the most difficult situation that i've ever been in it was so awkward i don't hear in, anything on the day that i won my pro card no no good luck at the show or anything um after the show i woke up and i was like oh i have to go to the olympia expo but I kind of just want to go, you know, walk on the treadmill for a moment. So I get up, I go to the gym. As I'm walking in, I see him um, walking in with one of his clients. I think I was actually like getting ready to leave the gym. And I was like, oh, this is weird. This is weird. Mm -hmm. And I kind of try to like sneak past this one desk area at LBAC so they wouldn't see me, but his client sees me. And we know each other. She's been following me on Instagram talk she's like oh my god there's Lexi let's go say something and they both walk over and she's like oh so you know do you want to say anything to her and I'm like just standing there I'm like this is this is weird yeah and he just kind of he like raises his eyebrow and she's like you want to congratulate her on anything mm -hmm. and he's just kind of like standing there I'm like hey and I like say his name and I'm like how are you doing? He's like, good. What? How are you? I'm like, I'm I'm great. You know, considering what happened yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, I see you did what um I wanted you to do in the first place anyway. And I'm like, what? What was that? Apparently, his plan was for me to compete at amateur Olympia and not North Americans, even though he, we had a whole dinner and he said that this was the right show to do. And he went MIA and never spoke to you in the interim. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, um, I, I did compete at the amateur Olympia. He's like, well, that's what I wanted you to do anyway. He's like, how could you not see like that was the right choice? I'm like, what? well, we said we were going to do North Americans literally because my only critique was to not lean so far forward. There could have been a chance that I would have got my pro card there. There's no, it's not possible for me to say that that was the only right choice. Seeing how I didn't get a chance to take the other option. And he kept like going back, but you did what I wanted you to do anyway. So you got your pro card because of me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> At that point, I just, I kind of shut down, and I was like, all right, I'm not even going to What the heck? Entertain this. I can't even believe this. You know him, like, almost your whole life. You guys do seven shows together. You obviously develop a coach and client relationship and bond outside of the family relationship you already had, and you said, you know, you treated him and felt like he was like a dad to you, and then he goes mm -hmm. MIA, and this happens, and now walk us through what you're doing to prep for the Olympia amateur like 
you didn't have a coach on in your corner. So what did you do? And how, how long was that in between North, when North Americans would have been? It was about four weeks. Okay. So what did you do in those four weeks? Um, so I went and got a DEXA scan to figure out where my, my body fat was sitting at. Because like I said, I felt super bloated. Um, I felt like I was having digestion um, issues. And I was like, okay, let's see if it's all in my head. If I actually gained some fat between the shows, what's going on? Um, got all that done. And I was like, okay, this is where I'm sitting at. And I would want my body fat to drop down just a couple more since it's an international show, like Mm -hmm. international versus nationals and regionals. I feel like it's a whole different ball game because they're used to a different expectations overseas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I might want to come in just a little bit tighter so I won't have to lean so far forward to try to show off some definition in my glutes. So I adjusted my cardio and I focused more on my hamstrings and glutes when I was doing legs compared to like focusing on my quads. Mm -hmm. Um, I messaged a friend after, because I would, I stuck to my, uh, my weekly check-in with myself of course I would take pictures yeah and I'm putting them together comparing them highlighting the sections trying to figure out is that right and I would send them off to a friend I'm like hey does this look okay is that should there be something different they're like you look perfect it's calm down I'm like okay (laughs) and the day of um, amateur olympia I was actually terrified because of like I don't know what to do did I come in like lean enough? Uh, did I come in full enough? Should I eat this to pump up? Should should I be doing this? My friend Kaylin, um, she's on Team Boss Bodies, was backstage keeping me calm Aww. until they told us they're like, "Oh, class uh, D, go line up because you're getting ready to go on stage." So we're all pumped up. I've eaten something. It was hard enough for me to get a pump because. I don't know if I didn't have enough carbs or didn't have enough water. I don't know what it was, but Mm -hmm. I got a a little pump. And then they're like, oh, actually, we're going to take an hour break. Oh, of course. (laughs) So I go out and I'm like, I go to the audience where my mom and a friend and her coach were like sitting. And he's like, "Um, aren't you supposed to be up there? I'm like, yeah. He's like, why are you out here? They decided they wanted a lunch break. And he laughs and he's like, oh, you're screwed. And I burst into tears in the oh audience. Oh, my I'm God. Like, I'm like, this is hard enough as it is. Like, can something just go my way? He's like, calm down, calm down. Wait, who is this saying this lobby. to you? Uh, my friend's coach. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we go out to the lobby and he looks and he's like, you're good. You just look like you might need a little more carbs, maybe some water. And I've known the, her coach for a while, actually, since my first show. Mm-hmm. Um, he was back there with one of his competitors. And he happens to come out to Vegas because he has a lot of his competitors competing in the different shows. And him not being my coach or anything, he's helping me out. And it was like the greatest relief, him and his wife. Mm. Um, uh, his wife makes sure I, I'm like going over my posing and everything. He's checking my physique. He's texting me when to eat something backstage. Wow. Yeah. Most coaches won't even do stage. that for their own girls. <laughs> yeah. I, you I was know? Like extremely shocked. That's so uh, sweet. I was, yeah. It was the greatest hope. And when I went back out on stage and they're like having me in center for first place and then for second place and overall to get my pro card, I'm like, Oh my God, this this just happened. Thank you for being here. Like you've helped me so much. You don't even understand. Like, I wish I had this throughout my prep. Mm. And so that kind of like dinged in my head. I'm like, 
I need a coach. I need another coach. I can't do this alone again. And I've seen a lot of competitors like coach themselves, but I was like, to be on that pro level, I can't do this by myself. Right. So I tried looking around for like coaches. I messaged a bunch of people just to figure out like how they do things. I messaged other competitors like, oh, how do you feel with your coach? And in my head, I always had with my friend's coach like in there. I was like, wow, he was willing to help me do all this. And I wasn't his competitor. Mm-hmm. And then I was just, I messaged him. I was like, I want you to be my coach. Like, I Aww. can't do this without you. And he's been coaching me since then. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. Yeah. And have you continued to have an amazing experience? Absolutely. It's, it's so much relief. It's a complete different experience. It's not as stressful. And it's probably the healthiest that I've ever been. How is that? Like what, um, when you say it's the healthiest that it's ever been for you, what does that mean and look like for you compared to maybe others? I'm not tired all the time. I actually get a good amount of sleep. My old coach, we would get up at four o'clock in the morning to train with this coach. I can get up at seven, actually get a full like eight hours of sleep, which is key to bodybuilding. And I did not realize it. Mm-hmm. but your body cannot change if it's not getting the recovery that it needs. I mean, it can change, but it will be in a bad way. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I always <laughs> notice like my body looks so different after an, a good night's rest, like check-in comparisons. Like if I look at a night of sleep where I got like five hours versus when I've gotten like eight to nine sometimes, or even one time, even 10, it's like, wow, I look so different. Yeah. And so I'm loving that. Um, my last couple preps with my old coach, I got lean enough to where I lost my cycle. Mm-hmm. And I know every girl is kind of like, oh, yay, because, you know, save money. Oh, pain. no, girl. Trust me. I feel, I've <laughs> lost my cycle for so long. I do not feel that way. I'm like, I cry every time it comes now because I'm so grateful <laughs> for it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hit that point after only had like missing it for two times. And I was like, okay, this is, you know, not healthy. But I have actually got down to my leanest at my last show. And I still had my cycle. Wow. So. Why do you I, think I, that I is? Because uh, he's just very key with our nutrition. Um and making sure we're reaching a low body fat at a slower pace rather than something that's quick and that your body's not ready to handle it. Like my body was situated to where it was like understanding, okay, we can still do this. We're still in homeostasis. We can still handle giving this up mm-hmm. rather than going into complete shock and having all my hormones everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> And you were already going through so much stress before with everything that had happened. Yeah. So, I mean, it's having him and having this be like extremely healthy and everything is definitely a tribute to a lot of the success that I'm seeing in my physique, you know, my show placement, Mm -hmm. my overall happiness. (laughs) That's amazing. I I love to hear this, um, like, turnaround in the hero story because he (laughs) was there for you when you needed him most, and now that has continued to be your experience, which is awesome. And you had even mentioned in, you know, kind of walking us through your process of everything that you had to do to get ready and earn your pro card on your own and how this was an international show. And part of that mindset going into that was that you felt like you needed to be leaner also. So do you mind sharing with us like what your experience has been with these different shows from the local regional shows to the international to the nationals like do you have any experiences that stand out to you or some of the differences we might be able to benefit and be aware of uh yeah so 
starting off with like regionals versus nationals. Um, most regionals are like smaller shows and it also includes, you know, a wide variety because there's novice, there's true novice, uh, mm-hmm. there's masters. So it's a bunch of just different things. So the, I don't I don't want to say quality of like what you're going up against is I'm it's picking kind of random. You really don't. Yes. <laughs> I know so, what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean like there's a reason why there's, you know, first all the way down to whatever or how many competitors there are. Uh, mm-hmm. with the national show, everyone there has either placed first or second. Uh, I think they recently added where it could be possibly third place. And some of them have overall titles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my first nationals was USA's uh, 2017. And I remember walking into check-in. And I was like, oh, my God, all these girls look amazing. Look at their shoulders. I don't have shoulders. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. Heading out. <laughs> you know? How'd you my do with that show? <laughs> I took uh, ninth place. That's amazing. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I was ecstatic for the, like, top 10 at my first national. Yeah. Okay, we're good. But that, the, the competition was extremely tough compared to what I was used to at regional shows. hmm Like, you could tell these girls had been practicing their posing routine for months, maybe years. I'd only done two shows before I went for my first nationals. Crazy. And I definitely see the point where people are like, just because you get your national qualification does not mean you're ready for national. Yes. <laughs> Save yourself from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, just a normal national with compared to an international I've noticed that a lot of the international girls come in a lot harder. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, It could be a negative thing for them um, based on, you know, how the judges want the bikini look. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just like, that's why I said I wanted to be a little bit leaner. I was like, if I'm going to go up against these girls who are, you know, showing this, not only were there like for me leaner is just showing more definition mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not getting like you know super super thin I just want more to be able to show right I'm, I'm kind of tiny <laughs> so <laughs> how tall are you I don't I'm five foot four okay so, me too but I mean like when I when I get lean I get super small so I don't I know. Isn't there. it so weird when you see yourself get really lean? You're just like, who? Where am I? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, I think I've gotten a bunch of like posts, and they're always just like, "Oh my God, where is your waist?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> it's left Instagram. It's left Facebook. It's left the comments. <laughs> but, so I'm like, I need some type of fullness be showing compared to these international girls Mm -hmm. um and then from you know amateur level to pro level it's just these girls are are seasoned like they know what they're doing everyone up there deserves to be up there because they've worked their butt off and you're just like especially on my like debut I was like I'm I I can't go up against these girls (laughs) And you did, and you placed freaking third. Which still blows my mind. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm like, where did that, how did that, what call out was that? <laughs> like, how? I remember watching your um, your recap video, and I thought it was really cool to hear, like, just how surprised you were. And I was actually curious, like, what it felt like for you to go from, winning your pro card to then a few months later going and getting such an amazing placing at legends which by the way holds such a special place in my heart i love legends classic um and i'm sure now you do too but um how did it feel to actually leave with 
points for the Olympia? It didn't hit me until like me and my coach were like recapping on like the plan of what to do next. I was like, okay, yeah. So this was a tier two show. So that doesn't actually qualify me for the Olympia. And then he's like, but you have points. I was like, I have points. He's like, we go on the website. The moment I saw my name, I just mm. like cried. I was like, oh my God, I am, I am getting there. Like, this is a chance that this could actually happen. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy to see your name on that list with the points. But it also, it's, it's the one thing that's like driving me further and even through all this crazy time. That yeah. I could possibly be up there. Yeah, you could. So what was your feedback after Legends then that you're using to get ready for the Olympia? Or I should say to qualify and then step on the Olympia stage, should you qualify? <laughs> uh, my feedback uh, was to come in a little bit fuller in my upper body. Because okay. compared to the, the two that placed above me, I look skinny. Mm -hmm. so are you like working so, on building or are you just gonna like peak differently right now I mean like the goal was to try to build mm -hmm. but with the lack of a gym um <laughs> I don't know how much I can actually build I'm definitely trying but we are gonna try peaking a little bit different um post legends I went and had a burger, a fry, um, large order of fries, and a milkshake at Black Tap. Um, and then put check-in photos the next day. And we were in love with that look. So, Isn't you know, that always how it works? Before. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way, too. <laughs> it's like, seriously? Looking amazing this next day. Got like th just amazing lines and the muscles are full. Kind of go, okay, I could, I could go, I could get away with having fries or a burger or whatever it is. You know, now my coach sometimes will give me that just depending on, of course, how we're looking. But yeah, it's great to be able to experiment with your body like that. Yeah. And I've done it before for a show, a burger and like fries for my free show meal. Um, but with this one being my pro debut, like, I did not want to leave anything up to chance. Like, I yeah. didn't want to spill over. <laughs> yeah, it worked out in your favor. And now, yeah. I mean, of course, you're working out from home, and we all would rather be at the gym. But is there – this is a question that I love that's been asked a few times now. So if there was an exercise, you could only pick one exercise, okay? If you could only pick one exercise for hamstrings and then an exercise for glutes and an exercise for shoulder, what would you pick for each? Only one. <laughs> so for my hamstrings, I would do oh, – I think I would stick with leg curls for hamstrings. Like lying, uh, seated? Uh, laying down, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for glutes, I would do barbell hip thrust. Yes. Um, and shoulders. Oh, that's a tough one because there, since there are three heads, can I get like all three, <laughs> like isolation? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, you have to pick one. <laughs> uh, this is, then I think I would do Arnold Press um, with dumbbells. So many shoulders. people have said that. I think for the I think same reason. The, yeah. <laughs> you literally hit every head for that one. Yes. I think that's why a lot of girls are like, oh, do you have, just have to choose that one? Obviously. <laughs> It's either that or I would do face pulls just because I love that. Yeah. Do you like using uh, the cable for that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The cable. I, I know. Me too. I've been doing them at home, obviously, with the band, and I don't mind it at all. I like that there's tension, like, all the way through differently, but the cable, it just, I don't know, something different about working out at the gym, you know? It just feels different. Yeah. You can, like, move the weight stack. You're not trying to mess around with it and figure out, you know, the best place to put it. It's just like, boom, you walk in, you get it done. 
I'm pretty sure when they open the gyms back up, I will just sleep there for maybe a week. <laughs> Has you seen like a um... fear that they might close? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> have you seen that video with Terry Crews in the gym and he's like, um, like dancing dance- with the weights? Yes. And that meme that's going around. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. I'm like, yep, that's me. <laughs> that's all of us, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So another question that was submitted by a listener, and I thought, they said, like, okay, you can ask anybody, but I figured I'd ask you, since you actually just signed with Monethos, right? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Monethos. And um, you've done a lot of different photo shoots, and she was struggling with judgment from people in her life, specifically people she's close with, like a mother-in-law, for posting photos Mm -hmm. that showed a lot of skin. And she was curious how you have overcome negative judgment or feedback from people you're close with in your life, if you've ever had to deal with that. I actually... I have, um, mm. and I was warned about it because um, my aunt had to deal with it, but my grandmother is not the biggest fan of bodybuilding. Really? Yeah, no. She doesn't like us getting uh, super small, and every time she would, like, see my aunt, she'd be like, oh, I can see, like, your jaw coming out. You look like you need to eat, and it, it started to transfer over to me when I started it's going to mm-hmm. be so tiny, like you're just going to disappear at every family function. She's like, oh, I made this. Are you going to eat this? I'm like, no, I can't. You're not going to eat anything? I brought my meals. Calm down. <laughs> well, it's fish. It, but the way you cooked it, I can't have it. Like, yep. constantly, like, picking on me. I'm like, I know I will never be able to get her to understand what I do. And I've accepted that. And if her making these comments makes her feel better that's fine um I kind of just let it blow over (laughs) try not to let it get to you because not everyone's going to understand and as long as you're happy with what you're doing with what you're posting that's all that matters like I'm not posting for I mean actually I am posting for everybody because I want (laughs) to keep everyone motivated but you know the things, my photo shoot, I started doing more of because I want to be comfortable in my skin. I'm, I'm actually really happy with, like, myself. I'm loving myself more. And I get to, you know, show that in my photo shoot. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to let someone who doesn't like me or what I'm posting get to me. Because you're happy and you feel good. Yeah. And you're inspiring a lot more people than you are upsetting. (laughs) At least that I know of. Yeah, I'm I'm sure of it. (laughs) Which, by the way, what does, and and thank you for sharing that insight, because I think that's really helpful. And just the way you said that you've accepted that she'll never understand. So you have to let it blow over because you're happy. I think that's the key takeaway. And I actually wanted to know, like, what does, Monethos do for you as a pro management team or company like what does this mean to be working with them because I see a lot of girls like a lot of pros who work with them and I was curious like what they do um so it's primarily like a a a modeling agency kind of Mm -hmm. um more for pro athletes um so you could have the potential to work with Nike Under Armour stuff like that, do advertisements, um, go to different events and expos, and get paid for it. That's awesome. So that was a something you had been wanting to do for a while, or is this something new? Uh, this They actually reached out to me after Legends. Oh, that's and, awesome. Like, I always thought it would be great. I didn't think it would ever happen. And then they reached out, and I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. Well, thank you for sharing that because I'm sure there are other girls wondering. Um, And I wanted to touch on what you just said too, is that you're really loving yourself a lot more lately. And something I love about you is that you are promoting positivity and self-love and you share the ways you've overcome negativity and the internal battles you face. Just like you opened up the show talking about how the gym's really been like your saving grace. And so 
was there anything in your life in particular that inspired you to begin doing the personal development work, the self-love work that you talk about on your page sometimes? Um, it's more of just, I don't want someone to feel like they don't have someone to talk to or any way of getting help. Mm-hmm. Like at first I was, I was definitely not one to ask for help. I would literally just shut down and kind of push people out so they wouldn't have to deal with me spiraling into my darkness. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of like share things. I'm like, I want people to be open. Like it's okay to talk about that, you know, mental issues are a thing. Like don't hide it. You know, it's okay to seek help. That's why I just started posting about it. Yeah, I love it. I think that's amazing. And it it shows in the genuineness of your post. And you also studied neuroscience, which I think is awesome. I got my degree in psychology and I'm getting my degree in clinical mental health counseling. So the mindset, the self-love, the mental issues and mental health awareness, being open about it, I think is really, really important. And you got your degree in neuroscience. So what got you into this? And if you could look back on your degree and time studying, what were some of the things you took away from that uh, curriculum or that knowledge that you find yourself applying to your day-to-day life as an athlete? Um, <laughs> that That's gonna, it's, that's a tough one because um, more of just the different connections um, since, you know, neurology is brain focused, mm-hmm. um, the muscle mind connections, I think that is the main thing that I use. Um, that's from my curriculum. Uh, I think looking back on my studies, I would have focused harder on that and listen more because now I'm going back through textbooks and I'm just like oh wait I, I could have been utilizing this a lot sooner <laughs> that's cool what do you do for you in order to bring your mind muscle connection up like what are some of the techniques you use um I'm always making sure that I can actually like see the muscle like working um so it, Right now at home, I make sure I have like a mirror in the garage with me or like my phone so I can like video, make sure I'm feeling it Um, or actually like touching where you're like focused on. Mm -hmm. Make sure you can actually like feel that muscle like tense up. Those are the main things that I do. That's awesome. And with this background in, you know, a pretty pretty much a science backed um, field, you also promote the power of energy and vibration and creating your life and the results that you want in conjunction with, you know, the things like taking responsibility and applying yourself and going after what you want, which I really connect with because, you know, I like the approach of morphing both worlds, like physical and metaphysical, as well as the science and the spirituality, the emotional, all these things. So what are some things you can think of off the top of your head that you feel you have truly manifested in your life? Some of the things that I've manifested, um, that I am not in control of everything. I can only work at, I can only do my best at the things that I try to do Mm -hmm. rather than things that I don't try. And so I'm always, putting myself out there and doing my best. That's the one thing that I've taken away from that. That's awesome. And that helps you to then really take that with you and create the life that you are and the results that you are. Yeah. I love that. That's amazing. And um, I I feel like we've talked on so many different things today and I appreciate (laughs) you sharing all your stories with us and giving us all your insight. And I mean, did I, do you think there's anything I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? No, I I think we literally touched on everything. I know. So, okay. So then I'm going to ask you another question. I ask everybody to wrap it up. And that is if you could give your best advice to someone who's never competed before, what would it be? And then if you could give your best advice to a girl on their road to pro, what advice would that be? 
for someone who's never competed before, my best advice would be to do your research and get a coach. (laughs) (laughs) Research as in what you're financially getting yourself into, emotionally getting yourself into, uh, physically getting yourself into, like know the sport, know the gym, all that stuff, the different movements that you're going to have to do and do the research on the coaches that you are looking to get into. That's that, fantastic that my advice. Main. Yeah. And then for someone who is on the way to turning pro, uh, my best advice would be don't be the one to stand in your own way. There are a million things that we as competitors can do that usually blocks our energy and chances of turning pro um, or doing anything in life that takes us to another level. Just listen to the people around you that are actually put in places to tell you what to do, like your coach, um, family, spouse, and take the help that you can get. Don't stop yourself because of doubts and fear. Yeah. Mm, I love that. You certainly didn't let that stop you. <laughs> there were moments where I felt like I I started to, but I, I worked on it. So Yeah. I can tell it, it, it's it's very apparent that you had the awareness of what was going on and then you took it back into your control and took responsibility and said, okay, well, I'm, I want this bad enough to make the change. And I've never heard someone on this show say, you know, to really listen to the people who were put there to tell you what you need to do and people you trust and the people you love. And that's a uh, powerful feedback and insight as well. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. And I would love to know if you could share um, where people can find you and connect with you online, maybe even um, reach out to you and yeah, just chat even more, or follow up on this episode or reach out for coaching as well. So um, where can they do that? Um, the best way to reach out to me is through Instagram. Um, you could message me on through the actual like DMs or you can email me. My email will be on my bio. Um, so my Instagram name is Lexis underscore IFBB Pro. And yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'll make sure I put that on the show notes page, which you guys know is always on www.celestial.fit slash podcast. I so appreciate all your guys' feedback, your ratings, your reviews. It means so much to me. And just the fact that you show up and listen every week, it's always fun. If you ever have any recommendations, suggestions, um, feedback or of course athletes you want to have on this show let us know and we always love it when you tag us in your post too as you listen so make sure you tag me and Lexis while you're listening so that we can of course cheer you on and say thank you so much and (laughs) with all that being said thanks again for coming on Lexis thank you for having me of course and I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day night or morning wherever you are in the world while you're listening to this episode of